what's up guys so yesterday was the 28th of july and uh it was my wedding so of course for my wedding uh i had to get a a car so for the bridal car that i rented i rented a new volkswagen new beetle uh cabriolet and the car is as i'm going to show you this one So what I have here is a 2009 New Beetle convertible and since I have it, I might as well go through a bit of the car with you. Uh, right now, top of my head, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with this car after uh, driving it for three days. Now, if the size of the car hasn't already like uh, cued you in on how small the goddamn thing is when I got into the car, just look at how little leg room there is for the rear passengers. I mean, of course, this is a two-door coupe, so it's not as if it's meant for anybody more than like two two passengers, a driver and a pa and a front passenger, but. Even the recent Mini Coopers, two-door coupes, have at least what I've seen a lot more leg room than this. Now another complaint I have about the Beetle is the size of its trunk. Now of course the, this goddamn piece of shit doesn't have an operating trunk. Somebody has at least broken the, the boot already so i can't really lift it open but it's uh, basically it's as broken as this goddamn fuel fuel cap that doesn't lock so whatever anyway but if you were just to look at the size of it that is the rear seat okay just a bit closer to the left that is probably where the trunk starts and that is about where the trunk ends and it's about only this high and it's a triangular shape so you can imagine how small the goddamn boot is you can't really put anything in although if i'm not wrong if you wanted to put something longer this thing is also broken on on the goddamn car but you could pull that down and it doubles as not only an armrest but an ability for you to slot longer items through the the boot out to the front but that's not really much of a concession either. So you're gonna have to either end up not transporting people at the back or not transporting more stuff in the boot. Now, just sitting inside, uh, well, the first thing I actually liked about this, even though it's an old car, is because it has really old fashioned style uh, cockpit. At the front, you can see, I'm gonna turn it on a bit. Give me a second. Now it still uses is from 2009, so it still uses a key ignition. So basically, the cockpit at the front over here, you're gonna see the where you are, which gear you are in. Not really gear, but which uh, selection you're in. And over here, once you put it in drive, there will be a number here that tells you exactly what gear you're in, even though it's an automatic. 
And the reason why I like this old-fashioned dashboard is that instead of buttons and touchscreens, it's still got all this analog switches. This is for the lights. So first is for the, uh, what do you call that? Uh, dashboard lights and headlights. Your air condition, everything is all con controlled uh, manually, which is the, one of the things I like about it. So down here is your main dashboard. And over here by the side, you will have the factory fitted, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, CD changer. Uh, quite a nifty little compartment here. Of course, handbrake and uh, gear shifter. Now for those of you who are smokers, uh, let's get this trash out of the way. Uh, that's the cigarette lighter and it's in a very very awkward position so this is your 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 main uh, center console and it's tucked all the way in here it's very difficult to get to and this is broken as well <laughs> and it's so difficult and these are your two cup holders now if you are drinking on normal styrofoam cups they fit fine but if you are drinking from those uh, typical 500 milliliter you know, uh, plastic bottles. When you stick them in here, this center console gets in the way and you can't really shove it in except to put it sideways and then it juts out like this way. Now, another thing I like a lot about this car is, well, the amount of visibility you get. If you're gonna be able to see around me, right, and I'm gonna flip the camera in front, Look at that, there is so much visibility in this car. Alright, I mean, even though the roof is pulled up and there's like this, this, uh, pil this uh, cover over here, but just looking at it, there's so much visibility. That is one of the main points that I do like about this car, and of course, Right here, you have a clock, temperature. This part also doubles as a roof sensor, so it, it notifies you. Not that you need to be notified, but it does notify you that the roof is down or the roof is unlocked. So as long as this thing is not fully closed properly, it will light up and it will show you that. And later on, you real, you, I'll be showing you uh, the driving and I won't be driving with the roof down even though I re would really really want to because this car doesn't really allow you to drive with the roof down without notifying you every single time you move off from a stop so when the roof is down and you are moving off it will make a beeping sound and it will just keep notifying you that the car is is uh, in a dangerous position because it's not meant to be driven a roof down even though you can. Now to bring the roof down basically as I showed you, you twist the handle, push the handle to bring it down, twist the handle and over here this is the button to bring the roof down, you push it, you push it, pull it up, sorry, uh, let me get it up, okay. Now, uh, yeah. You pull it up and it goes down. There we have it. As simple as that. And of course to facilitate turning the entire uh, car into an open vehicle. So this, the windows are still up, right? So there's a big button here which pulls down all the windows. So just pressing the button pretty much brings down all four windows there now one more thing uh, that I am probably not going to try and show you is because uh, I don't really want to get myself locked out of the car but I tried there was one time when I tried to get in all right and as you know there isn't a lot of leg, leg room in this car you can see I'm already like really squeezed in there's not much gap so when I got into the car uh, oh my god it's raining so when I got into the car uh, with the car uh, off uh, of course that enables the steering lock and I hit the steering wheel and the steering wheel locks against 
you know, you wait on some older cars, you get that steering lock sound, the click sound. And then when it happens, you'll realize that the key will be unable to turn. You can't, you'll be unable to, for some reason, turn the key and start the car because the steering lock is uh, jammed against the ignition barrel. So I had to find out the hard way that it was uh, quite a common thing amongst uh, some of these older Beatles. And uh, what you had to do was you had to lift up the, you had to hold up the steering wheel and then twist the key at the same time as you were doing it. Look, there are some horses. Basically, I'm at an equestrian club, club right now. A lot of people riding horses. That's a nice that's a nice horse. Yeah. That one's beautiful. Yeah. Alright, so we are driving off on the car. First thought is how low the right height on this is. It's nice. The low right height, I love it. I, I like low riding cars because it makes things easier to control. It's easier to see the immediate surroundings and I like it. But the thing about having such a low ride height on this Beetle is that there is practically almost no suspension. I go over a hump, you really feel every single thing on the goddamn road. I don't like that, uh, particularly in Singapore, because a lot of the roads here have humps. Yeah, okay. And uh, the, the lack of suspension is annoying. Now, another th thing that bothers me about the car is also the steering. Well, the steering is quite heavy. The doors are heavy as well. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, the steering is heavy. Now, the steering is heavy because I believe it's not assisted electronically like some newer cars. Uh, but it does give me a bit more feedback when I'm steering the car, which I like, that's a, a plus. But trying to turn the car at slightly higher speeds does uh, take a bit, a bit more strength than usual. And not a lot, but uh, still quite a bit of effort that needs to be put in there. Now, one more good thing about having a car this small is how small the turn radius is. I love the, this about the car. Why? Because outside of my house is a very tight U-turn. Basically, I need to U-turn every single day just to get to work. So on a bigger car like the stream that my dad used to drive and I would usually take out uh, occasionally, comparatively, this is so much easier to U-turn out of, of that uh, of the car park. Not only that, the small size also makes it easier to park the car. I mean, when you have a small turning radius, a small footprint, parking into almost any lot is a breeze. And I really love this aspect of the car, even though I am complaining about the amount of space around, but that's still a plus. Now the car, of course, it comes with a 1.4 liter. At least this particular model, I know it comes with a 1.4 liter engine. The 1.4 liter engine is, I wouldn't say, the greatest. Uh, I mean, it's it's still better than pretty much any of these other uh, 
sedans, family sedans that are on the road with me today. But think about it, I'm not sure whether the Volkswagen new Beetle is meant to be a sports car, but as a two-door coupe, you know, you and a hundred and ten, hundred twenty dollar a hundred ten hundred twenty thousand dollar price tag I think uh, when it first came out then you'd expect a bit more performance now I'm right now in drive mode so the drive mode is a lot uh, a lot less uh, peaky than a sport mode it's a little bit smoother when you when you drive but just leaving it in it's a bit boring it's quite mellow now I'm putting it putting it in the sport mode oh shit yeah that feels a lot better when you put it in the sport mode of course the throttle it feels a bit more responsive than usual but it still doesn't really solve one of the base problems is that the engine just doesn't feel powerful enough coming from somebody who rides a ZX6R636 uh, super sport motorcycle uh, where you know uh, the amount of throttle control needed to not flip the bike over it feels anemic in comparison but for somebody that probably never drives bigger cars or faster cars it's probably fine one thing I noticed about the Beetle is that it probably uh, performs better at high higher uh, RPMs, so roughly about 3,000 to 4,000 RPMs where you know it starts kicking in but anything before that it's sluggish and kind of like just uh, holds itself back and I don't I don't really like that I like very responsive cars that have amazing power down low and then uh, maybe it doesn't have to go go that fast at the top end but you know a lot of power down low but the Beetle that's not where it, uh, where it is at also one more thing is the build quality on the Beetle just doesn't feel good it feels cheap for something that's supposed to be a premium vehicle I mean in Singapore the Volkswagen Beetle is seen as an, a luxury car uh, it kind of annoys me that when I touch everything it feels a bit cheap however at least uh, no matter how small the space is once you do sit on the seats it does feel a lot more comfortable it's not that bad but anybody sitting behind there's really no leg room as I've showed you before it's really uncomfortable for rear passengers so try not to pick more than uh, one passenger at a time all right one more thing I left out as well earlier was that on this car, you only have pretty much only one reverse light, unlike most other cars. So it's not 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 say a really big deal, but uh, honestly speaking, if this light goes out, then you pretty much don't have any other reverse lights available anymore. So uh, uh, it's raining. I'm gonna try and get away from from it. So there you have it. The Volkswagen Beetle that I rented and I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching bye bye